Okay, I'm Mark O'Connell from Agriculture Victoria, based at Tatura, and today I thank um, Summer Fruit Australia for being able to present the project update on the Summit Fruit Experimental Orchard, also known as Project SF17006. That's an aerial view of the uh, experimental orchard, it's about three and a half hectares, and I'd like to acknowledge the Hort uh, Innovation uh, Funding, which is Levy Funds, State Government, Victoria and uh, Federal Government fund sources. And I'll give a background to the work and uh, the key findings and where to next. And we've just heard all about the uh, export opportunity potentials um, in the Middle East and Asian regions. We've heard about population growth and issues around food security, water security, scarcity, climate change. So all these things um, uh, are big factors and if we had to grow good quality fruit, we need to be able to um, improve that fruit quality, be uh, sustainable, have optimum production systems, uh, etc. And obviously current orchard systems, as you know, uh, range quite variable from traditional vase, canopy, low density orchard systems right through to the modern high density two-dimensional two canopies. There's new plantings coming in production. Worldwide, across the board, stone fruit doesn't have a lot of experimental agronomic studies around the world and limited data does exist, obviously. So hence some of this work that we've done at Chichura. Um, and then regards your, your main uh, cult, uh, <coughs> root, root stock system, uh, especially in peach and nectarines. And so the work we, we looked at and with, with literature research and, and industry input and advisory committees, we looked at root stocks, we looked at crop load management, <coughs> we looked at canopy design and deficit irrigation. So the Tatura Experimental Orchard has, has the, all, th all four crop types, the peach, nectarine, plum and apricot. We looked at the yield and fruit quality and the tree growth type metrics around that. And as I mentioned earlier, the, orchard, mate, the key orchard factors are root stocks, irrigation management, fruit number, crop load, and uh, canopy design. So the key findings from rootstocks. So we, we had studies and experiments over several seasons on peach and nectarine, and we had a range of dwarfing, semi-dwarfing and vigorous rootstocks uh, and high vigor rootstocks. And the effects were quite dramatic in most cases on tree growth and development, on yield and fruit quality. And in summary, cornerstone, High vigour stock produced large, sweet fruit and higher yields compared to the industry standard Nemega. Crimps 86, known to be semi dwarfing, showed that with light interception and tree metrics, had equivalent yield and fruit weight to Nemega, but did improve the skin colour coloration of the fruit. Crimps 1, dwarfing, small trees, low yield, but equivalent fruit weight to Nemega and improved colour as well. Uh, but it did have the agronomic negative of excess suckering year on year. On year. In terms of canopies, what the key findings were on peach, nectarine, plum and apricot, um, where we compared both bars and trellis type systems side by side. Again, we found tree growth effects. We found bigger impacts and also big differences in yield and performance and fruit quality. <coughs> We got more and greater uniform light interception under trellis, Tratura trellis systems, the V trellis, compared to vertical leader canopy systems. We showed trellis out yielded vast trees side by side when we, and mainly because of the establishment years where you've got post and wires to help support that developing tree in the young, young trees. And they have yeah, the more capacity to have more fruit per, per, per tree. Tratura trellis again resulted in more uniform uni fruit weight and, and more uniform fruit maturity compared to a vase. And then when we looked at the vegetative growth, whether that's pruning biomass or trunk size, or, or uh, we, we saw in the vase a lot more of that vegetative non-productive growth in the vase compared to, to, compared to the uh, other canopy systems. In terms of crop load, we, we did work on peach, we did work on nectarine, plum and apricot. 
a similar story. A lot, lot of partitioning effects were seen and, and affected tree performance and fruit and yield quality and quality, marketable yields and fruit quality. Fruit weight and sweetness decreased rapidly when you had excessive fruit number. Fruit maturity, whether that was for firm, fresh flesh firmness, colour development, was delayed under high crop load systems and low fruiting levels helped uh, put the resources into the tree rather than the fruit, obviously, so there's excess assimilate and, and it made more vegetative growth. The key findings in the irrigation studies, um, we, we used uh, nectarine, late season cultivar, September, September bright, and we looked at the water stress effects and uh, on yield, fruit quality and tree growth. Um, it confirmed basically the, the earlier work at Tatura back in the 1970s, et cetera, on RDI, where we, irrigation can control vegetative growth. Doing RDI in stage two of vegetative uh, of fruit development, regulated deficit irrigation in stage two at the 30, 40% level of crop water requirement, maintain yield. But what we also found for the first time, I would argue, is that we maintain fruit quality, which hadn't really been studied that intensely before. So we maintain fruit size, maintain sweetness, firmness, maturity, colour of the fruit. So in summary, that there is um, yeah, good evidence there, support that good water savings of up to 30, 40%. Um, so in water, water limited years, drought years, for example, low irrigation supply, we, we, we suggest and recommend irrigate at th uh, in the RDI window for 30, 40% and also post-harvest 30, 40% of crop water requirement. I've developed these uh, production protocols, so to speak, on each of these factors, orchard factors, rootstocks, water management, crop load management and uh, canopy architecture information available on the HIN website. We also have in the most recent uh, issue of uh, the Tree Fruit Grower magazine uh, summary of some of this work as well. There's also further information on the HIN website, year by year, experiment by experiment, um, production and yield and quality and fruit quality information and access to some, some scientific literature as well and publications on the topics. I'd like to acknowledge, um, oh, sorry, I'd like to also highlight there are other uh, sources of information. There's the HIN, there's ResearchGate, obviously myself, and, come and visit Tatura and uh, do a tour of the site. We also have virtual uh, um, uh, orchard tours. So each experiment, we've videoed each experimental treatment, the trees, etc. So a lot of information available there. Acknowledge project team and, and uh, again, the funding source. And where to next? So. We've basically come to the end of a cycle of funding and uh, project work, and we've got questions now, do we need to maintain this orchard, experimental orchard? Obviously it needs industry support and funding. It's a resource there for the future, for future work potentially. On dwarfing rootstocks, I'd argue we need um, to probably focus on some of these super high density dwarf, uh, systems and compare some of the newer uh, plant material coming out of different um, uh, breeding system, uh, yeah, breeding programs. In terms of crop load, the, um, we, we saw, as we demonstrated earlier, huge, huge impact on fruit yield and quality. There's new uh, ag technology out nowadays where we can individually scan up and down with these mobile sensor systems. Here's a picture of a green atlas cartographer, which is basically a mobile uh, platform sensing trees and fruit, and it can be driven you know, seven to 10 k's an hour up and down the orchard rows to measure fruit number, to measure fruit size, to measure fruit color, to measure tree size. So you can bring all this in spatial mapping of, your, of your, each of your orchards and crops and, and potentially precision ag type uh, assessments of uh, how variable or uniform the canopies and the fruit uh, load, crop loads are. Um, and, and potentially applicable to yeah, uh, precision uh, variable rate spraying and other other um, applications. 
I, we, we've heard a bit about cost of labour and inputs and uh, reliability of labour and um, other other issues in recent times. So uh, we'd argue that there is need to focus in future um, and on, on mechanisation, whether that's platform harvesting, pruning systems, and eventually maybe robo robotic harvesting. They're the sort of things that are being considered. Uh, and again, with labelling and traceability has been mentioned tonight a couple of times, and and, um, and having um, whether it's down to the orchard level or the block level, or the bin level, or even the fruit level, um, traceability, and right through the supply chain. I think that's enough for me tonight. Thank you.